how much aid spending aims to be disability inclusive. This presentation talks you through how to use official data from the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development to explore how far official development assistance or aid spending aims to be inclusive of persons with disabilities. It's based on a more detailed guide, which you can find on the blog page of the Centre for Inclusive Policies website at this link. In this presentation, we're going to focus on an example, looking at official development assistance or ODA from Sweden to Ethiopia in 2018. You can use the same method for any bilateral development partner. That's to say any individual country that um, provides official development assistance. And you can also use this method looking at official development assistance from the European Union. So to dig down into the data a bit more, we need to go to the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development, the OECD's aid database, which is called the Creditor Reporting System. So I'm going to put that into Google. And this is the web page that you get to. So the first thing to do is to set up the basic menus at the top of the page so that they give us the data that we're interested in for the purposes of this analysis. And there are three menus that are particularly relevant for us. The first is the donor menu. So because we're interested in Sweden for this example, we want to select Sweden here. It takes a little while sometimes for the data to load just because the database is so big. The next menu that's particularly relevant for us is flow type. And here we want to select commitments. The reason for this is just because of a technicality in the way that development partners record their data on disability. And we basically get slightly more reliable analysis if we select commitments at that point. The third menu that's particularly relevant is amount type. And here we want to select current prices. The reason for doing that is that it makes it uh, it's the most straightforward way to do an analysis if you're just looking at a single year. If we were doing a comparison between years, we'd have wanted to select constant prices. But in this example, we're just interested in 2018. So current prices is the simplest way to do that. So I'm just going to check the other menus um, are at the top of this at the top of this page because they should default to the settings that we that we want. But occasionally the OECD does change things. So it's always a good idea to check. So in the sector menu, we're interested in all sectors. In the flow menu, we're interested in, in we're interested in official development assistance. In the channel menu, we're interested in all channels. And in the type of aid menu, we're interested in a lot of different types of aid. So here it's best to have it as all types of aid. Then the way that this page is set up, the columns represent different years and the rows represent different countries that receive official development assistance. So for this example, looking at Ethiopia in 2018, we want to scroll down until we get to the row that corresponds to Ethiopia and then go across until we get to the column that corresponds to 2018. Where those two meet, that's the cell that we're interested in. And if we click on the number in that cell, that's how we can open up the detailed data. It opens in a new window and we want to expand the window so that it fills the whole screen. Then the next step is to download that data into an Excel spreadsheet format so that we can um, do, do analysis and, and um, make adjustments to it. To do that, we want the download button that's at the top right hand of the window. So we click there 
and after a minute the spreadsheet should um, download into the bottom left of the window. It does take a minute because there's a lot of data. So there it is and we can open that up. At this point it's good just to check that the spreadsheet has formatted the way we want it to. It should do usually, but there can be glitches at this point, depending on the way that your, your computer is set up. So just to check, um, if you take a look at the first row in the spreadsheet, what you should be seeing is that each cell has its own um, heading. So just one or two words that are, are distinct and belong to that cell. So in the first cell, it says donor. In the second cell, it says recipient. In the third cell, it says sector. In the fourth cell, it says flow, and so on. If the spreadsheet doesn't look like that, if you don't see each cell with a separate heading, then um, I'd refer you to the um, the guide that's on, on the Centre for Inclusive Policy website, because that includes a troubleshooting section that's, that um, suggests what you can do if, if the formatting hasn't worked at this point and how you can get back on track and carry on with the rest of the analysis. But in this case, um, the formatting has worked, so we're ready to go. So the next step is um, to sort out the data, to remove a few, um, a few sorts of data that could interfere with, with the analysis and with the results. Um, to do that sorting out, we're going to add filters to the different columns in the spreadsheet. We go to this sort and filter area and click on filter. And now you'll see that each column has an arrow at the top and that arrow will allow you to filter what's in the column and remove anything that you don't want. So there are two um, sorting things that we, we need to do before we get onto the analysis itself. First, we need to check that there aren't any negative values um, for negative values of ODA spending in the spreadsheet. Now, it might seem strange that there would be a negative value of spending, but what can sometimes happen is that a development partner commits to spend a certain amount of ODA and it makes that commitment in one year and then something changes and the commitment is reduced. And it's when that happens that you can sometimes get a negative number showing up. But we don't want them in this analysis because they, they, they distort things. So to remove any negatives, we go to the filter arrow at the top of the value column, click there. And you'll see we now have a, a bunch of different options for how we want to filter this column. Um, for what we want to do, we want to go to number filters, greater than or equal to. And then we write in that we're interested in anything in anything greater than or equal to zero and that will remove anything negative from that column. The other um, bit of adjustment that we want to do is in a column called type of aid name in the middle of the spreadsheet. And the reason that we want to do some adjustment here is that we want our analysis to be like for like with the analysis that the OECD itself does on disability data. And when the OECD is analysing this data, it deems that only certain types of aid are relevant. It calls these types of aid allocable ODA. And the justification it gives for doing this is that allocable types of ODA um, are more readily under the, the development partner's control and they're easier for the development partner to monitor. So that's why it, it, it argues that um, the analysis should apply to these types of ODA only. So the types that are deemed to be allocable are these seven types on this list. Those are the only ones we want to have in our analysis. So going to the type of aid name for Sweden and Ethiopia, if we click on the filter arrow, you'll see here, this shows the different types of aid that we used in this Sweden, Ethiopia scenario. So the first one is basket funds and pooled funding. Comparing against the OECD list, we see that basket funds and pooled funding are allocable. So we want that type of aid to be included in our analysis and we want the tick to stay in that box um, to, to, to make sure that that, uh, that type of aid is included. The next, um, the next here is um, contributions to specific purpose 
programs and funds managed by implementing partners. So comparing again to the OECD list of allocable ODA, we see that that too counts as allocable. So we want that to be included in our analysis and we want it to have a tick next to it in this list, which it does. Next, it's other technical assistance. Again, that counts as allocable ODA. So we want it included in our analysis and we want to make sure that it's ticked. Next, project type interventions. Again, that kind counts as allocable. So we want that to be included in our analysis and we want to check that it's ticked. Then finally, scholarships and training in the donor country. Now looking at the list of allocable ODA, scholarships and training in the donor country is not allocable. So we don't want that in our analysis. So I'm going to remove the tick in the box next to scholarships and training. And then when we apply the filter, that will be filtered out and our data no longer includes anything other than allocable ODA. So it's comparable with the way that the OECD does this analysis. That means now we've done those two adjustments, we're ready to get on with the actual analysis itself. And there are two columns in the spreadsheet that are um, the ones we need for the analysis. The first is the column called value, where we already did that adjustment to remove negative values. That shows the value of ODA that's been committed to different activities. And I just flag that all the numbers in this column, they are stated in millions of US dollars. The other column that we um, that we need for the analysis is the disability column, which, as you would expect, is where dis development partners record whether they intend their ODA to be disability inclusive. The way that they do this, they use what's called the disability marker. And the disability marker is basically a coding system where they can put a code in the database that shows what their intentions were with regards to disability inclusion. So these are the different codes. A code 2 means that disability inclusion is the principal objective of that spending. So, for example, if the spending is a grant to an organisation of persons with disabilities, that will be a code 2. A code 1 means that disability inclusion is a significant objective of the spending, but it's not the main reason why the spending is happening. So an example here might be a, a large scale social inclusion project that's targeting a, a lot of different overlapping population groups. And one of those groups would be persons with disabilities. Then that would be a code one. Code zero means that the spending does not target disability inclusion in any significant way. Then there's one last possibility, which is that this um, this section of the spreadsheet might be left blank. Um, and that's because the, the disability marker is still optional. Um, development partners can choose not to use it. And unfortunately, at the moment, still quite a lot do make that choice. So blank is, is one of the possible um, possible results that you could get here. So looking at how this works in practice for Sweden and Ethiopia, if we go to the disability column, click on the filter arrow at the top, um, we can see here there are those different codes, 2, 1, 0 and blanks. So say we want to find out how much of Sweden's allocable ODA spending in Ethiopia had disability inclusion as its principal objective. Then we want the box with the 2 to be ticked, but we want to remove the ticks from the other boxes. And we see that, in fact, in the case of Sweden's allocable ODA spending in Ethiopia in 2018, there was just one item that had disability inclusion as its principal objective. And the value of that of that spending was point was 0 0.039 million US dollars. In other words, 39,000 US dollars. If we repeat the process again for code one. So we remove the tick from um, code two and add it to code one. Um, that'll show the different items that um, had disability inclusion as their as a significant objective. 
So we can see that there are a few more of those items. Um, and if we want to calculate the total value that had disability inclusion as a significant objective, we go to the value column and we calculate the total of that column, which we can easily do by highlighting the column. So clicking on that box right at the top that has a code with a couple of letters, highlighting the column, then Excel will automatically calculate the total of that column. And that will show at the bottom of the screen here, the sum or the total of the column is um, just over 22 million US dollars. We can then repeat the process again for code zero, spending that didn't have disability inclusion as an objective. And we see that the total of, of such spending is 26.39 million US dollars. Then finally, we want to see what, what amount of spending was coded as blank, was left blank with the disability marker not used. And it's, it's really important to include this step from an accountability perspective, because obviously it's a, it's a, it's a big challenge if, if development partners aren't using the marker and they are just leaving this section blank. So we want to hold them to account and we want to make sure that their, their, their decision not to use the marker is also reflected in our analysis. So in the case of Swedish allocable ODA to Ethiopia, we find that the total value that was left blank uh, for the disability marker was 12.9 million US dollars. So that gives us some, some results on how um, Swedish allocable ODA for Ethiopia stacks up against the different categories in the disability marker. We can now use that to calculate what share of Sweden's allocable ODA in Ethiopia aimed to be disability inclusive in 2018. In other words, we look, want to calculate the total of Sweden's allocable ODA spending in Ethiopia that was that aimed to be disability inclusive, divided by the total of all Sweden's allocable ODA spending in Ethiopia. To calculate the total of Sweden's allocable ODA spending in Ethiopia that aimed to be disability inclusive, we want the total of everything that was coded 2 and everything that was coded 1. Both those codes fundamentally mean that um, the spending was aiming to be disability inclusive. It was just aiming to do that in different ways. So we want the total of 39,000 US dollars and 22.18 million US dollars. That comes to 22.22 million US dollars that aim to be disability inclusive. Then to get the total of all Sweden's allocable ODA spending in Ethiopia in 2018, we want the total of everything that was coded to, with disability inclusion as its principal objective, coded one, disability inclusion as significant objective, coded zero, so it doesn't target disability inclusion. And importantly, everything that was coded was left blank. So the grand total of all those categories is 61.51 million US dollars. Then to calculate the share that was um, aiming to be disability inclusive, we want to take 22.22 million US dollars, divide it by that grand total, 61.51 million US dollars, and that gives us 36%. So 36% of Sweden's allocable ODA spending in Ethiopia aimed to be disability inclusive in 2018. So that's a brief run through of how to do some number crunching using the um, data on the disability inclusion marker in um, official data from the OECD. But of course, just as important as crunching the numbers is how you present the results of the number crunching and how you show what the strengths and the limitations of the data are, what the data can and can't show us. So for some tips on that and also some suggestions on further analysis that, that could be interesting, then um, take a look at the, at the full guide, which is on the, the Centre for Inclusive Policy website. Thanks.